looking at the draft screen, and now we are too, well, our own version of it anyway. Lich already removed by Complexity, Io indeed as well, by Mineski. I mean, you don't want to deal with Z-Freak's Chen, so I'm going to imagine that Mineski is going to ban that out next. Yeah. The Unless they have a very good answer to it. The idea is either... So, I was more confident about the Chen ban than I was the Io, but I was pretty certain that the two bans in order, it doesn't really matter how it goes, would either be Io, Io Shaker or Io Chen. Yep. And so we see Io Shaker. Um, and of course, complexity, they ban Lich Venno or Lich Nix. Mm -hmm. But what do you think the... So, if they get Chen, what are the better answers to Chen? Because we've seen more Crystal Maiden. Yeah, I think CM, I don't think that's been great. Witch Doctor. I don't think it's been successful. Because yeah. these two heroes, the problem with them is that they get run over. Mm -hmm. You can maybe stop one creep and it's mildly annoying, but it doesn't beat the concept of the hero, is the issue. And Mineski actually take Tusk. Are they going to go do like Tusk Bane or something? Tusk. I'm. You don't sound convinced at all, Will. I'm trying to figure out what that is a response to, because now Complexity have options. They can take Visage, they can take Chen. They can just like straight up pick Chen Visage, or they can do like an NA classic where they just like Jakiro and leave things open. Play the Chessy Visage. They play it in very different ways as well, Chessy and Isosize, but they go for the puck first. What about the um, Spirit Breaker that we've seen earlier? I feel like the, that hero hasn't been very effective. I think teams are just getting better at dealing with it. Um, just being able to like kind of get the feel for the pace that Spirit Breaker takes in yeah. the early game. And the downside of the hero is, it's in the early game, it makes up for a lot of your shortcomings, but you still need disables. We saw in the Navi yeah. game, he can't be your only initiator. Right, which is why Earthshaker is such a prevalent forward position, yeah. right? But I'm, I'm more surprised by the Tusk opening, and I think Complexity is too, because they're sort of hesitating a little bit. Tusk doesn't really... He's not. He doesn't really hard counter anything. Doesn't really get hard countered by anything. Aren't you just okay with their spirit against that? So it is Jakiro. Okay. And I think this is a response of let's leave things open. We're not really sure what this is leading into quite yet. Hmm. Was Complexity the team that ran Jakiro on the offlane? Yeah. Yeah. But they can also run it as their safe lane support. Space. Yes, of course. And so they can. The, yeah, flexibility in both the heroes. Yeah, and yeah. in the quals against uh, Planet Odd, they ran it mid. But it was Firo playing it, but they still ran it mid. So options wise, it's just an NA classic in that it leaves things really open. Like it doesn't signal anything. Yeah, and if you also want to take from other NA teams, you can even run it as a five position, like uh, Optic have done yeah. with PPD. Night so, Stalker. okay, Night Stalker and Tuss. Yeah. The what what, what is this? Will you keep on saying like so? The Crystal Main Witch Doctor, right? They get run over. These. Five positions to mean to be rapidly falling out of favor in replace of like two four positions, basically. Two traditionally thought of as four position roaming style heroes. Yeah, but uh, Liquid, I think, played against us last time when they played against Mineski in game two and they, they just ran over with Chen. Because the, these heroes, as pure lane supports, they're a bit difficult to run and they both require quite a bit of levels and they need some measure of farm. Uh, but for Mineski, I still think Chen's an okay ban. Complexity does ban the AM, by the way. I think they definitely ban Chen now, right? Because they have two, their two four positions are kind of locked in and they can't grab the Enchantress to counter the Chen anymore. Maybe. But it Complexity. Kind of silly to me to it feels like out. Complexity kind of knows that something is up. Maybe they were expecting the Chen to come out from Complexity and they were baiting them into yeah. it and they just want to. They have planned a strategy against that. I mean, Tusk, Tusk Enchantress is a really powerful Five duo um, because remaining. you can snowball in the like Centaur or Hellbear. So, Cole, they ban Ench. Very smart. You just mentioned it right now. I mean, I, but I specifically thought they don't have the opportunity to pick Enchantress because of the fact that they. That, that would mean like Night Stalker's off lane at that point. No, they could do Ench off. They could do. We haven't seen a whole lot of. Inch core, right? So it uh, happened twice. Ice 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 has played yeah, he played. Oh, okay, in the you're right, right. It, it didn't yeah, work yeah, out yeah. in that game specifically. It was against uh, Venno. It yeah. was against Matoma and okay, that, And then that definitely yeah. makes it. So this time they right, bench so. in, which makes sense in the second phase. Like uh, we had talked about how important it was. So for complexity, there's some options. I don't know if they'll take something like the NP, uh, considering. I guess Night Stalker and Tusk both sort of work against it. Yeah, you're, that's a hard game. 
five seconds remaining. You have NP. You have. You could go for Wyvern again. Um, that Jakiro offlane isn't bad right now if you're against these two fours. Yeah, because you're they they just kind of run out of damage, right? Against yeah. uh, Jakiro. Tanky. As what about our, our friend the uh, the Necrophos? Where did Necrophos he go, and Will? Pugna, where did it both yeah. go? Those uh, are three four pickups. Why aren't we talking about those? Necro uh it's a bit weird because Cole they don't wanna get they don't wanna get cheese and just get Mushi AM'd. And mm -hmm. if you open Puck Jakiro, you're just gonna get it's a really decent chance to just get AM'd. So they're gonna take CK in response. So Maneski, they need some clear. What do you what do you grab here? Like Sven? Are, are you not afraid of being counterpicked Dusa as Chaos Knight? Because we've seen a lot of these Chaos Knights either like fifth pickup or fourth pick straight into the ban phase, that final ban phase where they can ban the Dusa. But it just looks weird when you have Tusk and S. You have these like really aggressive heroes, and then you have a hero that essentially doesn't have the ability to be mobile. It's like a it's a good counterpick, but I mean complexity pace of game wise will just run at you. They'll just throw bodies at you, and it's not really the ultimate uh, that's going to make these hero annoying. It's just good at laning. We've seen uh, Medusa for Mushi twice, and I think Winter was really unhappy with it. It should be a last, a last, resort, a last resort pick rather than <laughs> a go-to pick against the CK. Cause... <laughs> it seems routine that analysts are upset with uh... <laughs> Mushi's pick. Mushi's Medusa. Well, Mushi's anti-mage is, uh, is really good, but that's uh, one of the complexity removed. Is there any other four that you could take for dealing with Chaos Knight? You already mentioned Sven. Yeah, I think Sven's acceptable. Uh, but Sven. I don't know. But again, it's like I feel like the Chaos Knight puts you in that position where it's kind of baiting out those later game heroes that you're talking about, that yeah, slower that pace. Team. You right. could do like DP as well. Timber Saw. Timber. That's a pretty good hero for that. And Ice Ice Timber Saw is really, really good. Yeah. But you do not want that Timber matched against the Chaos Knight in lane. Okay. Like it may be good later, but it's very fragile in the beginning because you start off with no armor. So it could also be a Nana Timber Saw, perhaps, or someone else. Uh, they have been sw swapping up their lanes a lot. Like we were saying that yeah. normally Mushi is the one that goes mid, Nana is the core, but they've been even swapping that up. You probably don't take heroes like NP then, if you see Timber. Timber, like, the best thing about him is that he gets to shove outside lanes. There's nothing you could do as a Furion against that. Especially if they decide to lane up. You only pick NP nowadays if you see, like, if you're liquid or if you have really soft supports. Like, if you see an AA or disruptor on the enemy team, then you feel pretty good. In the games that Mineski played yesterday, they had a really good map control and great vision, and Night Stalker kind of covers that a little bit already. Do you feel like complexity needs a hero that offers more vision? Because they don't have anything like that. Or is uh, it not necessary? I'm not sure. They're. Their lineup is like kind of weird overall. They have a ton of team fight. Like that's what complexity have. They have pretty good wave shove. Remaining. Their disables are alright. This is the first time that Kunkka gets picked up. By the way, we've seen it uh, banned out against Lanum's Kunkka, but uh, not actually been picked yet in this uh, land so it's far. It's really nice against Timber. Yeah. It actually crushes Timber. Some of the. So I don't think you have to worry about the the Mineski Tinker. But what about the Broodmother? Are you susceptible to a pickup here? Or do you have enough from complexity? Uh, Maneski could definitely brood. Yeah, because I was thinking you just have Jakiro, kind of puck. Complexity can't really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're Is not, it they're, Kunkka they can't pretty brood. good against the brood as well? Kunkka's alright against brood. They take Viper. They're picking a lot of heroes that you just don't really want to go on. Yeah. They're all yeah. kind, of, kind of tanky, have good defense mechanisms. They also know. Chaos Knight wants to go constantly yeah. on heroes. They also note that Cole has heroes that don't naturally build BKB early. Because any sort of BKB core at this point for complexity would be really nice. Chaos Knight can burst down a lot of heroes, though. Can he not burst any of these, or are they still too tanky for that? Uh, Timber is pretty tanky, but if you go on him early and you just X-boat him, yeah. X-torn boat him, he dies pretty fast. Yeah. Tusk is pretty nice against that, though. He can just snowball yeah, it in, case, snowball. It's, uh, in oh, case he gets attacked, yeah. yeah. A lot of this game's gonna come down to how this Tusk looks. So they do ban Brood, because they realize, like, guys, we're okay, but laning-wise <laughs> it's gonna be really rough, dealing with both Brood and Timber. How does, um... Viper? Um... 
I think it's all right. I don't think you you like it against all these tanky heroes. Is Visage still an option for Mineski? It's well. okay, but I thought they would take something like Necro. Okay, still Necro. Or maybe Pugna. I think that's what the AA ban signifies, by the way. Yeah. I would have taken Pugna or Necro. I think Necro is like pretty solid here. They don't have a like a natural blade hero yet. Or an alchemist. Chaos Knight picked up. You don't really like that item. Is Alchemist not an option? That's also a hero that I think of when I see an AA ban. Ox are right. Mm. It'd be... You have a lot of good fight. Um, I think you'd have a pretty slow lineup, though, between both Timber and Alk having later timings. You need a second Lave Shove hero. Yeah. Oh, uh, And I guess Viper would be on the same lane as an Alchemist yeah. regardless. So. You just need killers if yeah. you're Mineski. You want heroes that can kill. You don't want heroes that... F you don't want heroes, I think, that farm, unless you feel really confident that this Alk will allow you to 1v5. That you can fight without your team for a really long time. Like, they can 4v5 without you. Because Complexity's lineup is just going to run at you for 15 minutes. So, I thought Pugna, because it's good against CK or Necro. Dire team pick. Pugna. Pugna! You like the Necro more? What do you think the Pugna I actually, device? so I first said Necro, and then I added the Pugna in there because I think Pugna is naturally very good against CK. Mm. And both those heroes, for me... What, why? The Green Goblin people. Um, <laughs> <laughs> You've got to crap a vibe. If you can't immediately that. burst those two heroes, and they get to play the space game behind these tanky cores that run at you, mm -hmm. it's really hard to get to the back line. Yeah. And so that's where Necro... And Pugner is strong where they have people to tank in, then they can come in, do whatever they feel like, burst somebody down. Yeah. There's the, you got the ags that you can just pop, pop yeah. illusions. But I, I do like Pugna better because I think it lane shoves a little bit easier. Uh, you have good tower hit. You have the option to play this very early game centric style that you know Complexity wants to play. And Cole, what do they take? Omni they take oh. Omni. Omni Knight. Oh dear. <clears throat> so that's. that's Okay, so that's a mid-puck offlane Omni. Yeah. Like These are pretty rough you're, lanes, though. Yeah, you're not real happy with that, that laning setup. It's got to be something a little different. Throwing a curveball somewhere. Maybe, you think mid-Omni does fine against Viper? Better than No, Puck? I can't imagine that. I mean, we've seen DKs do, do well against Viper. DKs I, different, though. He's got, he's got static regen, and he's got a range nuke that reduces damage. Mm -hmm. So are you convinced for complexity or for Mineski? Uh, I like Mineski. Right. Ten seconds remaining. This is a tough call, guys. Now this is the part where I hope I'm right and Will, Will agrees with me. <laughs> if not, I know I'm wrong. I think complexity might be the slightly better team, but I think Mineski might have the slightly better draft. It's all pretty right. toss-up, but if we're going by draft, which I have been all tournament, Mineski. All right, let's figure out uh, who's going to be right and who's going to be wrong and who gets it up in this first game of the day in the semifinals of the playoffs. It is over to Lyrical and Gods for game number one. Thank you very much, Shiver, and hello and welcome, ladies and gentlemen. It's the first semifinal, Gods. We're here, Southeast Asia versus North America. Swindles famously said that he thought these were going to be the two regions to talk about way back at the Shanghai Major. So clearly, this is the semi to watch, you know. Forget <laughs> Liquid Secret, not exciting. Kyle, Swindles himself said, this is the two best regions. Here they are. This could be the grand finals is what I'm hearing. Absolutely. <laughs> Completely and totally. And I'm super excited about this game. I saw Kunkka. There's a Timber Saw in there. A couple of heroes that aren't normally seen. It took until the very end of the game, or the draft rather, to see Pugna. No Necro either. Uh, what do you think about the drafts? Would you agree with the, the panel? I mean, they were a little bit split about it as well. Yeah. Draft-wise, we've definitely seen more... I think shakiness from Maneski, but no, we're not talking about the draft in terms of their play, which is where I, I, we saw Will's hesitance, I think, towards saying Maneski, because there is a kind of feel that Maneski have got a better draft, and I think that comes very much from the fact their lanes <laughs> are stronger. Uh, <laughs> Do you see this, this chat? all, Chad? What is this, happening? Is Mushi nervous? What? Good luck, good luck. Kyle asked if Mushi is nervous. Okay. Yeah. And Mushi's like, what, me? <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what's happening already. Mushi's response, uh, it's my first tournament. <laughs> Mushi's just like, who are you? <laughs> You're on trash, bro. Don't talk to me. That's amazing. Get out of my game. Well, I love it. Kyle's trying to get in Mushi's head. And 
some good some good banter. This is this is what we uh, we like to see. Well, it's certainly going to be an interesting one, and already teams heading out across the lanes and. I guess that, is this going to be sort of a, an aggro try coming out from Complexity then? Looks like it, or at least... Contesting the runes, in. yeah, definitely when you've got the uh, Omni camped up top. This is an aggro try, they're looking to get a first blood, take the bounty rune, and then get off to a really good start bottom. Chaos Knight, one of the great heroes to run in these aggro try lanes, having a ranged initiation with either Reality Rift or Chaos Bolt, ton of kill potential. Mushi is going to be under a lot of pressure. He's actually got an Orb of Venom first. He is not anticipating an aggro try lane. You don't get Orb of Venom, Diverse three heroes. Yeah, and this might end up catching them off guard, but they will reveal themselves most likely as they're. Oh, Mushi, Mushi popped the the smoke and and managed to stay hidden, which was good. Yeah, well done. I wonder if he changes lane at all, or if he's just gonna. I, mean, I don't think you really accept your fate as a pugna. You're gonna you're gonna feed versus try lane, no matter who, how good you are. Yeah, and up here top, Mu is just gonna be the one that has to deal with the Timber Saw. That matchup, I mean, you've got Repel, but then there's also a Strength here, so when Repel's down, it's a little bit sketchy. What do you think about it? It's very good for Timber Saw. He's got an unlimited regen. He's Timber Saw should win this against Omni Knight, but Omni Knight should still farm, so... Very likely we won't see it, like, dominated. It shouldn't be a lane where kills happen until level 6. With that said, it is Ice Ice Ice. It's the guy known for just getting kills in these 1v1 matchups. He loves the 1v1 matchups. It's funny, because Moo was at the TI with DC a couple TIs ago. He was the Timbersaw 1v1 expert, so he should be very familiar with the matchup, which is what uh, is going to serve him well. Absolutely. Mid lane, Viper facing off against the Puck. Uh, phase shift obviously very effective, and it does look like Kunk is sort of hanging out around this area as well. Um, is there any real kill potential here at all? Not really. I imagine we're going to see both teams go for the tri lanes bottom. Uh, with the aggro tri lane, Mineski sent both their supports down here. They're like, wait, we can't let our Pugnet die time and time again. We have to commit three heroes here. They're going to play the game of pulls. They're going to just play uh, this defensive style around Mushi and look to just chip away at Complexity's aggro tri lane. Certainly the lane to watch. Sometimes with these tri lanes, you run into issues with experience and stuff like that, and we'll have to keep yep. our eyes on the poles also. And the really good thing is, Mineski know they have winning matchups in the other two side lanes uh, on paper, so if they can at least just hold their own, not get up too many kills bottom, their other lanes should do well. Viper uh, should have the edge against the Puck. Similarly, Timbersaw should do very well against the Omni Knight. Yeah, now that Orb of Venom not looking too bad since he's able to get a little yeah. bit of harassment with the long range. Now that he's got the supports there for some room, bottom lane, there's actually a lot of kill, uh, blows being traded here. Torn is out already. Ninja Boogie dropped down low, but Kyle is going to be the one under fire and drops down. Mushi, Sin, who's nervous now. Yeah, over Venom Dota. He's got the slow on Z Freak. He's almost able to get a follow up kill. Still level one, but even. Oh, the Mineski level one trialing is incredibly strong. Eye shots for blocks. The Void coming out from Night Stalker, one of the best level one nukes in Pugna. Orb of Venom Slow really paying off there. The 1v3, you don't want this item, but once it turns into a 3v3, this item is super value. Yeah. And Moo is actually doing a good job of keeping Ice's farm, or rather, uh, HP fairly low with the purification. Yep. He plays that very carefully, obviously. Yeah, he's winning the lane so far. We'll see if he can kind of continue this with the Soul Ring Rush. He will be able to constantly spam purification, so it will somewhat be a, a lane of traded farm. Perhaps this is maybe a more even matchup than I anticipated because, yeah, he's doing very well yeah. leading the CS for the time being. Oh, and then meanwhile, down there in the bottom lane, there's more action going on. as a DD rune on the Viper. He's able to dominate this fairly well, at least through this current wave. Uh, but we'll have to keep our eyes on this and see how much chess he is able to get. So far, uh, basically matching Mushi for CS, even though they did manage to find that kill. And, well, Decrep comes out. A good bit of damage. He's blocked by his own creeps, but will still live. Yeah, it's, it's still fine. This is a, a win for Mineski. You don't get the kill, but you zone him out. You force him back. Mid lane's a bit worrisome. The Puck's got extra regen. He's got a salve. He's got tangos. Meanwhile, Viper uh, has almost used up all his regen. No salve. Well, has one tango left. He's going to go for the dive here. Pops yeah, the, the fairy, fairy fire. fire. Trying to turn it. Nah, it's still nah. a lot of damage. All Can he slows. do it? Able to get away and limp, actually. Is he going to die to tower? Okay, him, thank that, goodness. That was actually really well baited by Nana. Nana was not losing the lane, but in a disadvantageous position because he had less regen, less health. But he baits limp in, has the fairy fire, able to slow him and get away, and now, ooh, oh, fuck, phase shift dodges that one, but <laughs> that that was one of those plays where you, he turns his disadvantage into a, a one lane by just baiting him in. Uh, 
thinking that he could get a kill. Bottom lane, decrept to save Ninja Boogie's life, but will be able to be for that much longer. They're trying to find the kill. Right clicks are there. They take him down. And Chessie going to take a couple more pot shots. It's going to be a return kill. Mushi trying to stay alive here, but he's being body blocked by his creeps and was slowed down all the hell. And oh. he only finds one before he goes he, down. He got Mushi. the XP and everything. He's fired up. That's uh, the fact he gets the XP before dying is fantastic. The bad news is Kyle gets a solo kill for it, so he's suddenly level four in Jakiro with uh, 800 gold. Kyle though may die. Ninja Boogie's going in bottom, looking for this kill. Doesn't want to let him TP. He's holding the nuke. Bottom lane. Bottom lane. Over here we go. Kyle snowballed <laughs> on. End up taking him almost down and shards to block. They yep. get the kill. Yeah. So Kyle just got that. That's actually a really good kill to get. It's a five position support, but it was a very high level one because he just got the solo kill. So. Jakira gets a lot of farm, uh, gets a lot of experience, and then you kill him, it suddenly becomes a much much more high-value kill. Now, Mu up here in the top lane was very low HP, and well, Purification a little bit off the mark there, trying to deny whatever he can. Doesn't need to be careful about Ice, but he's a low man anyway, so he won't be able to find a kill. He's crushing. Yeah. Uh, he's just constantly harassing, has the heal sustain, and Ice Ice Ice, even with three points in reactive armor, is kind of getting bested here, just not getting the same farm as the Omni. Went for the Orb of Venom for the Harass, but it hasn't really paid off. Bottom lane, Mushi caught again. He does a lot of damage there with the Blast, but not enough to really put that much pressure onto him. Now an X. Any torrent to follow? They don't have anything. Stun is there. Only one second. The Ice Path a little bit off the mark, and looks like Z-Freak will be able to escape as well. Very uh, interesting stuff so far in the lanes. Viper. Pulling ahead of the puck, getting some good denies in here as well. Limp is definitely in a tough spot. A full level ahead is the Viper. So Nana not going for the, the Viper strike just yet, holding on to the skill point. If he catches puck with no phase shift, he may go for it. But for the time being, he's just uh, going to wait and see what happens. Um, obviously, a lane dominator, the Viper. It, do you think now that once he's going to get level 6 here on Limp, they might start to rotate? Or do you? is there any oh, chance that they find a kill? He will him. more likely just pick up a TP. Um, I, ro I don't think we're going to see him like roam through like the, the river to another lane, but we'll see him like TP counter gank. So if a dive's happening or if there's uh, going to be a big clash in the side lane, he will TP in. So I'd expect to see that come out on the, the courier fairly soon. All right. It's got his bottle. The courier is waiting at base. I think that is waiting for the, the TP money. Limps just a couple gold short. Meanwhile, though, Kyle in a little bit of an awkward spot himself. They're bringing in the Kunkka. The Ice Path is going to connect onto three heroes, actually. And Mushi brought down fairly low. It looks like he is going to be able to live. There's no thing else yeah. for damage. We're seeing now the Pugna really get exploited. Once the Complexi Agro Trialing got some levels, got their magic sticks up, anytime they can go on Mushi, that very squishy Pugna is uh, really feeling the heat here. And Cole is now the one who had the edge down bottom. With levels, they've got a better initiation. Multiple forms of it with the Kunkka and the Chaos Knight. So very tough lane for Maneski to hold their own. Yeah, and they just leave. They're like, screw this. We don't want to be around anymore. We're going to head over towards the mid lane. Literally three heroes just running mid. Yeah. Ice Ice has regained control over top lane. With his level 6, he managed to zone out the Omni, force him back to base. He's actually level 7 now. So he's. this is kind of the, the lane matchup win I, I thought would happen earlier. But it just took him a bit longer to get there. He needed his level 6 first. Ninja Boogie, they are going to actually pull him back in and caught now in the shards. He's going to be able to jump away. The coil connects onto three. I don't know if they're going to be able to find enough damage. Actually, with Chessie rotating in, this might be enough. They need to slow them down at least a little bit more reality rift back, but they're also bringing in the Viper now. Scary stuff indeed. Ice Path off the mark. The shard's not going to catch Chessie. Kyle might be the one that gets brought down as they do snowball forward. A lot of damage coming out onto him, but Akimelo do it instead. They take down the Night Stalker, and Kyle going to die, but it's a trade. Support for support, not a big win either way. Both teams rotating in their mid, really a, a dead even trade there. Mushi getting a bit more freedom at bottom, but as soon as he goes back to farm, Limp is actually rotating in. Mushi needs to be very careful. Oh, oh Limp, I like the Tango in. He doesn't go for the blind orb. Oh, waiting for it. He needs to find it, but it is not going to open up and... Yeah, better, but... I think once he got closer, he should have gone for the orb. Orbing in from the trees would have very likely been dodged, but once he got a, a bit nearer the tower, he could have perhaps gone for it, but doesn't want to also overcommit and then use his orb and go down. I really like what I'm seeing so far from both of these teams, though. It feels like neither side is really backing away from taking the fight. Both sides really are, are, are content to go in there like we saw 4-4 four and four even in the river. Oh, yeah, this tri -lane versus tri -lane, this is a great way to start off the day. A lot of kills, a lot of action. 
fifth kill for complexity as they they tie things up on the kill scoreboard and it is very close to dead even in terms of overall farm as well slight edge from Maneski out of the lanes as you'd expect the, the viper matchup the timbersaw matchup this is the somewhat expected result of those lanes at least now we got to keep our eyes on it night stalker was almost level four there z freak is going to come in now and ice 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 a lot of damage on the move they're going to try and pull him back in He's maybe for the purification 20 reactive he is not dying <laughs> He's actually more likely getting <laughs> kills here than anything. God, Moo just taking a beating. Moo wants to get another heal bomb off, but... Oh. Meanwhile, bottom lane. Yeah, Kyle, he's going to get sucked there by Mushi. The ice path to break it, though, and still continuing to dive with Limp showing up as well. They block off good shards there. Mushi's still trying to run the orb. It's going to connect. He can follow up with the silence. They pull back in with the reality rip, and they get the kill. The snap on the coil as well. Jabs barely able to get away from that one. This Chaos Knight is just so strong in this aggro trial lane. Because it's 3v3, Chaos Knight's biggest problem with constant fighting is often mana, but this magic wand gives him constant charges, constant like re regenerated mana, and he's just able to keep on fighting. So we're seeing the constant clashes really favor Chessie. He's not getting the kills, but he's 0, 1, and 5, the one death being very early on in that lane. So Mushi says, I can't stay here anymore. He's going top. I think Mushi's Perhaps biggest mistake in this lane is he hasn't bought raindrops. I think that's just going to block a lot of the damage output coming out. Uh, even if you're just blocking some damage from a Chaos Bolt, it's such a big boost to your health that it's definitely worth getting. And look out top lane. They're going to kill the Kunkka. Not really much needed there. There was a hasted Viper coming in as well, so there's going to be no way that they stay alive there. There is a rotation down bottom, though. This is a great move from Mushi. Can now follow it up with a tower, but Cole will look to do the same bottom. Get a kill and probably try and pressure this tower. Easy pickup there for them. Kyle's the one that finds yep. the kill, and with Jakiro, they shouldn't have any trouble taking that tower rather rapidly. Mineski will push a lot faster. It is just a level one liquid fire at bottom. Good news is there's a siege creep, though, so that's going to kind of give them the push. And actually, Mineski say, well, we can take the tower and defend. Ice 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 already has the 20 reactive up. Macropire on the creep wave that does scout Ice Ice Ice, but he may just look to defend this one. If he can get the creep waves off the tower. Oh, this is a very bold mood right here by Maneski, and they are going to come in. The orb has already been used by Limp, though, and now he's in a little bit of trouble trying to get out of there with the TP. Is it going to happen? No, they can't get him. Yeah, he was a second or two away from another Whirling Death, very close to a kill. Kyle going to get the TP out. This is still what Mineski wanted. They took a tower while defending theirs. Considering how many Complexity heroes committed to that bottom lane for the gank, expecting a tower follow-up, Mineski don't mind that they don't get a kill there. Obviously, a puck kill, fantastic, would have been a big win for them, but Mineski going to follow this up, the rotation's bottom, with some fight. As uh, under the tower, Ice Ice Ice, bottom lane, is really getting in their face. Chaos Knight even popped the ultimate, thinking he could kill him, but not the case when you've got 20 reactive armor. Yeah. 36 total armor. He is just a beast right now, and well, Viper and Timbersaw, you're not killing either of these guys at this point in the game at the very least. Do you think that's something that's going to be an issue going forward, complexity running into damage issues? Um, could become one. Uh, Omni's not a hero known for his damage output. Chaos Knight's going to need to farm more, which is, with the constant fighting, not happening. He's less farm than the Omni Knight, for example, so I think there's a lot of concentrated farm on Moo, which is not going to translate into an ability to kill either Timbersaw or Viper. And the really good thing for Mineski over the last couple of minutes is Mushi's just stuck it out top. He's just farming away. He's not pressuring the tower, but he's finally managed to get away from the action to get some farming levels. Oh my god. Again, Ice 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 just daring them to come at him. They do repel Kyle. That's going to keep him back for the moment. Macro Pyre down as well. Nobody's really standing in it, and they do find the kill. Mu just going to punch Ice 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 a few times before he heads off on his way, I guess. Yep. Get himself out of there. Does lose his last couple raindrops there, but not the biggest deal for him. And, I mean, it, it definitely feels like Maneski, they're just really content to keep these lanes pushed out. And Complexity don't want to end up giving away this tower for free, for sure. Yeah. Normally we've seen Cole's successes come from like this 15 to 20 minute, maybe even up to 25 minutes, like five man death ball. They have this big team fight, but it's a it's a team fight that pushes really hard. Like Jakiro, Chaos Knight, this game, they've had a lot of Chen picks. They always get these heroes that can take buildings and objectives and sustain. The Omni Knight being the big sustain hero this time, but with the start they had, that's un they're unlikely to translate uh, into a good mid-game push right now. So they're really going to have to start finding some key pickoffs, which is not easy to do until Puck gets a Blink Dagger. 
And again, they go down bottom. Complexity trying to pressure this one out. Moo, he's standing toe-to-toe -to -toe with Ice Ice Ice, but in some trouble, going to be forced to repel. They're going to snowball forward and find themselves a kill onto Kyle. Yep. Moo forced to run away in mid lane. And we'll see if they're going to be able to find anything in return, but seems unlikely. Yeah, Cole could have maybe even had it worse off there. Perhaps they could have killed Moo there. They had the Warus punch to break any repel TP, but they went for the easy free kill because they want this tower. So Viper, Timbersaw, Charging forward at bottom. Ice 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 is in his element right now, playing Timbersaw, constantly running at Cole in their face. 20 reactive armor almost permanently on this Timbersaw, and Cole cannot kill him. They've got to go for other targets. They're trying to make it happen right now. There's the Dream Flail on to two. Is this really going to amount to much, though? The Torrent comes out as well. Chessy is here, bringing everybody except for the Jakiro right now. And, well, Chessy taking oh, a lot snowball. of damage from Ice Ice Ice. They throw out as well. The big old shark comes through, connects onto basically nobody. They are going to be able to bring down one, though, it looks like. That's actually the Omni Knight dead. Chessy falls as well. Maneski, they are not taking anything right now. Z-Freak is going to end up falling as well. Maybe no. They don't have anything to break the TP. The complexity need to run away. Limp in trouble. Can he get out of there as well? The suck is there. They find another kill. Maneski are just dominating. Holy cow! This is this is by far the best game of Dota. Maneski's played all tournament long. They've had they've had their wins. They've made it through the semifinals, of course, winning two best of threes. But the way they're playing right now, this is a new Maneski we're seeing in the playoffs. They've really stepped it up. They're playing together as a team. The snowball saves from jabs, maybe not completely saved, but it just buys time. The CK used ultimate reality rift on this Viper to pull him in, and instantly the Tusk snowballs him, keeps him alive. Meanwhile, Ice 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 doesn't get snowballed. He just runs in, tanks the damage, clears out the illusions, and there's nothing Cole can do. They have this decent sustain, this very farmed Omni Knight, but they're just unable to fight because Chaos Knight, despite the success they had with the aggro trailing, getting kills on Pugna, Chaos Knight hasn't farmed. This game for Cole really needed a farm Chaos Knight. And Maneski had been able to find Pugna room to farm. He went to the off lane untouched for the last like five minutes. Chaos Knight constantly fighting, unable to get those items. They really need to catch track up. A 6,000 net worth lead. Kill score doesn't tell the whole story, even though it is a little bit of a lead there for Maneski, but it felt like that one was really just a backbreaker. It brought pretty much everybody there. Uh, I wasn't, they didn't see if Swindles didn't have his TP up yet at that point, but he ended up coming in a little bit later to the fight, and I don't even know if it would have mattered, honestly. It's just, it, yeah. it feels like they don't have what they need to either lock them down or find the kills. It was this just frontline Timbersaw that you have to get past to get the kills because you're not killing him, and yeah. they tried to dive past him, go on the Viper, pull him in with Reality Rift, but... Mineski say no. Well, with a hood now and a, a plate mail queued up, Ice 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 is going to be damned hard to kill. Not going for any kind of a Bloodstone build, which is kind of more a more snowbally build. He wants to go for the tankiest build possible, knowing that he can create space for his Pugna and his Viper to do the real heavy lifting as far as damage output. Oh, and you look at this as well, Mu realizing that they're going to need to go for a plan oh, B Mu. here. He's going for a Midas, and they're bringing in a lot of heroes. Mu could be in trouble here. They've got Warriors punch for him. Well, might have something before you go down. He's dropping his items in his face. Stun, silence, wallop down to death. Well, well, well. I think what Cole really needed to do was continue ganking and pressuring Mushi. He, he was the hero they decided to shut down, and then once he goes to the offlane, pushes the tier one, he keeps farming, and Cole don't chase after him. I think they needed to follow Mushi wherever he went. He's the squishiest hero, he's the easiest kill, and they just let him farm uncontested, and that really has hurt them right now. They've been trying to deal with the Timbersaw, and Timbersaw's a hero you don't deal with, you ignore him. You ignore him and just wait for him to go away. Oh man, it has well and truly gone astray here for Complexity, bleeding and feeding away kills time after time. And you understand it, like they need to keep these lanes pushed out. Even there, the X and then uh, the Kunkka Xing himself and then throwing out the boat just to make sure that he clears off the creepways. But it feels like it's just kind of delaying the inevitable push that's coming from Maneski. Yeah, I Maneski's mean, not in a, a huge rush right now to go high ground or anything. They haven't got, uh, I mean, they've got an okay high ground lineup, but they really want this Pugna to get a lot more farm. This is a hero that every item he gets makes him a lot scary. The Ags gives you the zero cooldown on life drain. Uh, the blink, maybe the blink he's already got actually is going to be fantastic just for positioning. A BKB could help him a ton with all the magic damage flying around. So, Pugna is definitely a hero that's going to scale incredibly well with farm this game, uh, as well as the levels. Uh, you just want to get more points in the life drain, as well as all your other spells, which are going to be fantastic this game. Decrep, the Chaos Knight, by the time he gets farm, Decrep maxed out. Can't really go on anyone. There's no Diffusal heroes on the dire side to deal with Decrep, so it's going to be very problematic for them.
I mean, is there a point, though, we've seen this hero get out of control before. Is there a point where he gets to a level of farm where they can't deal with him? On the Chaos Knight? Yeah. If he had the Midas to catch up, I'd say it could happen with time, but he's farming with his armlet, um, and it, it feels like, yeah, going Midas would have been a bad idea, but at the same time, it may have been the best idea of whatever okay, possible items he could have gotten. Just because... He, Cole's way back in this game is the Chaos Knight getting scary. You do get to a point where you're incredibly hard to deal with, even against, even with a Timbersaw on your team. Viper's going Maelstrom to deal with the illusions, but you're not going to get enough farm without that farming item, and I, I don't think Chessie's going to get there without a Midas. Tier 2 tower falls in the top lane, yep. and eyes set either towards Roche or another objective, but like you said earlier, it's sort of at their leisure. They don't need to pressure and make anything happen super early on in this time, and well, that Achi talent as well. I, when I look at Viper's talents, I just I cringe a little bit. It's so freaking good. That much Achi at this level. Yeah. It's pretty nice. He also gets some amazing ones later on. 20 armor at level 25. He's got some of the worst level 20 talents, but you know, you, you, you take that for the other three talents you get. Yeah. Building towards that BKB now as well, just to make him that indomitable force, hitting towers and taking the life away from Cole. So we'll have to watch and wait. I mean, is there another like smoke gank rotation that you can make with Cole or like what, what's the ideal hero to go on here? Yeah, I, Pugna again, he's the squishiest. He's the easy kill. He's, you have to make sure you actually cancel his blink. So when you go on him, you need Puck to get an instant blink coil or a blink silence. So you do damage and Mushi does not get a chance to blink out of there. Um, but, and we've seen Mushi alone, like it was alone at top for a long time, so they didn't use their smokes, I feel. I don't think we've really seen any attempts at real coordinated smokes from oh, Cole no. as a team. They're I think they're realizing it's time now. They've got two smokes, one on Kanka, one on Jakiro. Time to try and use them. Problem is, Maneski are grouped up, so it's very hard to smoke into this five-man unit. And if I'm not mistaken, I believe they have ward vision all around this area as well, scouting out all of Complexity's yeah. movement. And they've seen the smokes in the inventory, I'm sure, so they're probably telling each other, like, they've got two smokes, they're going to be looking to use them, let's just stick together. Oh, they pull back in one, it's a hope and a prayer, but a snowball puts the kibosh on that, the boat's oh, going he to doesn't actually budget. connect, and, well, the ice path to fall, are they really going to do this? Maneski getting pulled apart, what the hell happened there? The snowball didn't last long enough, it wasn't, it wasn't really Jabs' fault as far as he had to let the snowball go, it got to the point where it was at its max duration, but perhaps used it a little bit too soon, and the, the Viper getting yeah jumped on. The perfect target This at this point. When you can't get to the Pugna, the Viper's that your next best bet. He's gone for this Maelstrom build, so he is a bit squishier without any uh, extra armor items, and Cole were able to, to get the perfect initiation. Yeah, and maybe just feeling a little bit too uh, confident in their own abilities, yeah. but Complexity's showing that they still do uh, have a possibility to fight. Three-man boat kill one of the three heroes, you torrent the other two, it was just a, a perfect chain stun, the ice path, everything just worked perfectly. I mean, what happened, it very much was the wombo combo moment. moment. When you hit, that, that's kind of where Tusk Snowball can backfire. This is a spell when, when Tusk first, first came out and people were using the hero, Snowball lost games for the team <laughs> using it, you know? You Snowball, it, we saw so many times where a team would three-man, four-man Snowball into like a Tidehunter or something, and boom, Ravage hits everyone, game is lost. Chronosphere. Like, there's so many good AoE spells that counter Snowball incredibly well, and Cole have a few of them. Jakiro is one of the kind of uh, better support counters to uh, to Tusk. You Snowball, you know what's coming, you drop an Ice Path, and you have a guaranteed hit, so... Very hard to play Tusk against some of these heroes. That's where Jabs isn't using the Snowball offensively, he's purely using it to try and save and block spells, which is how you have to use the hero uh, against these kind of lineups. You can't try and aggressively Snowball in against a Jakiro. He's going to try and dodge X Torrents. He's going to try and dodge, like the the Chaos, like Chaos Knight pops his ultimate, stun someone. He's going to try and save that stunned up hero. Well, and now Maneski realizing that they're not immortal, they're going to pick up the Aegis of the Immortal and try and help themselves out. Yep. Smoke forward. I think they're a little bit close to a dire ward, maybe, but maybe Maneski just don't care. Viper finds a fortunate DD to help him take that Roche nice and fast, and yeah, Maneski just going to start chipping on the tower. Another ward placed down there on the high ground. They have yeah, vision, it's... and this is so hard to deal with. That smoke is worth it almost just to get that high ground ward without being spotted. So with a high ground ward, it's very easy for them to play around Cole's initiation. Oh, Doesn't have reactive in. armor. This is a lot of damage on Ice Ice Ice. And again, another snowball. Do they have enough to lock them all down? Again, they've caught themselves. Ice Ice Ice, that's going to be another kill. 
Maneski maybe have gone too far. Yet again, the long duration stun onto the Tusk. It pulls him back in and he goes down as well. Maneski far, far out of position and th this punishes so heavily. You do have the X, they pull back in again onto that Viper, trying to kill him off. Mushi is moving forward. Can they keep him alive with the Decrep? It's looking like it's okay. Limp is there as well. They pop the Guardian Angel. Can they keep him under control? Limp again, taking a lot of damage. That Viper just deals so much of it, the Ice Path, but they need to back out right now. There's the long acceleration suck as well, and Jesse trying to stay alive, but it's not going to happen. Nana no, no, just so strong, and Ice 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 is back with the Bloodstone. He respawned incredibly fast. They don't have buyback on Chaos Knight. They do in the park. Yeah, and it was looking good for a moment, but maybe now a bit too much. And even if they do take down the Viper, he's still got that Aegis. They force the buyback there from the Puck. They bring in another. This Pugna Ward as well, doing a ton of damage, but they're also able to get a two-person torrent inside of a Macro Pyre with a Life Drain from Mushi, keeping Ice 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 alive. They turn on to Kyle. They take him down as well. Jakiro buyback. They have to hold, but it's feeling like it might just be too much. Nana Viper still Strike as well. This is going to yeah. be a dieback. Complexity getting rolled over here as the barracks are most likely going to fall. The boat comes in, but to no avail. Yeah, they'll get the, the racks for sure. Cole will not tap out at this point. It is not an entirely lost game, but a very difficult game to turn around. But Maneski looked a bit too gung ho at the start there, and I think definitely was a bit too far forward for Ice Ice Ice, particularly until you have that 20 reactive armor. You don't want to go right into your enemy tower. He got pulled deeper into the enemy base. Gets X torrent voted. Even with the, the snowball buying him some time, he never was able to build up the regen and the armor he needs to survive there. So really good jump from Cole to try and hold their base. Mineski just had too many tools. The, the chase afterwards, Viper just too tanky, stayed alive for an incredibly long time and ultimately destroyed Cole. And I guess at the end of the day with the um, you know, it, Bloodstone up, it, it didn't end up mattering. <laughs> he just comes back yeah. in and it's fine and dandy anyways. Still have 12 Bloodstone charges. Yep. Took him a little bit longer because he doesn't have the travels, but right. the fight lasted such a long time. That's where Viper is great. Viper makes fights last a long time because he's so tanky. You, you can't just bring him down instantly at this point. And that really paid off. I, I don't like that Limp went for this boot to travel this game. He gets the Veil now. If he had the Veil and say the travel's there, you're a lot better off. I feel like Boots are trapped. When you're the ones defending high ground, uh, I guess Cole obviously weren't anticipating to be in this position. Um, the Veil is just going to help out your entire team. Kunkka, Jakiro, all of their spells doing more damage with a Veil that fight could have made could have made the difference. They may have actually been able to finish off that Viper. So I think Limp's Boots of Travel purchase is a big expensive item for a very a hero that doesn't have much farm. That was his like first major item after his blink was a Boots of Travel. The Veil would have been a lot better for the constant fighting going on. Yeah. Well, and I think that, you know, like you said, it's definitely not the way that they wanted the game to go, but it, it's sort of the, the problem that they're now facing. They do manage to get Z Freak out of there in the bottom lane. They hit on a scan, Radiant, but weren't able to uh, find the kill. So Shrine's now taken. Uh, Aegis for not that much longer on Mask Game. Might have yeah. actually already gotten expired. 60 seconds. So where then, do you go at this point if you're either team, I guess? Maneski want to keep chipping. Even with that short duration on Aegis, they're going to push out lanes with the Timbersaw. He's got boots of travel now. Uh, they're also going to wait maybe for like some kind of initiation. But Viper, Pugna, you can siege from a very safe distance. For Cole, you need to do similar to what you did last time. Yeah, you lost your axe, but the idea was solid. Jump a hero, someone like the Timbersaw before he's got reactive armor. Pull, the, pull in a Viper when the Aegis expires try and get onto the Pugna. They need to get that big team fight initiation, that Wombo combo, that X boat to initiate. The Chaos Knight needs to get in there. They really want to try and find the big team fight if Maneski push high ground. If they're not, farm up. Chaos Knight needs his BKB. That's going to be the, the big key item for them at this stage. And still a little ways away before the next night time. It feels like Maneski very comfortable just waiting for that and, you know, to get everything else that they need. Um, at that point, if like they wanted to, is there any value in them trying to take the fight before they get towards sieging high ground or catch catch Maneski off guard? Yeah, it, it's a good way of getting to the target you want. If you let Maneski set up right outside your base, Pugna Tusk are going to be very well positioned. Pugna so that he can't get gone on, Tusk so that if whoever does get gone on can get a snowball save. So the surprise factor of smoking out of your base and taking the fight away from your base is always going to be uh, a strong tool to use against a lineup with like a hero like Pugna who wants to sit back, not get caught. So if you can somehow get a smoke wrap around, get the back lines, go on the Tusk, go on the Pugna, you're going to have a lot better, a much better chance of winning a fight. Problem is it's very hard to do that during nighttime because of Ninja Boogie's vision advantage.
Yeah, speaking of which, he scouted out the Omni Knight there, and they're all are moving up towards the top lane. They will be able to have eyes on him. Silence, break in the TP. Oh, oh no, no, no. He, yeah. Mu is most likely dead here. They have all the control in the world in just a second, and I think that nobody from Complexity is going to be able to get there in time to help out Mu. So yeah. shards come through, Walrus Punch as well, and he is going to go down. Tough spot to be in. He had the Greaves to break the silence. He could have gone for a Repel TP, but if he does that, there's, there's the Walrus Punch, so... Tusk has proven to be a very useful hero to have this BKB magic immune piercing disable. See multiple times where Mu has gone down because he can't just re repel TP away. And with that kill, they are going to chip away at top. This should be at least a tier 3 tower. Possibly even Rex, 40 seconds without an Omni Knight. Yeah, and all of the buybacks were used earlier by the rest of the heroes too, pretty much. So yeah. you really don't have a, a build. Like if you lose anybody at this point, pretty much, it's, it's maybe even game. I totally agree. One one dead core hero, whether it's Puck or Chaos Knight, in the next 10 seconds is a guaranteed racks, possibly game. Now, hold Depending it on. on how Cole want to play if they're two racks down. The CK them. can't finish his BKB in time, unfortunately. Oh, Reality Rift. There's an X as well. They've got a good bit of damage there. Still no Omni Knight, though. Scary stuff as Chessy brought down to half HP already. Actually, turns oh, on snowball. to Mushi, able to blow him up. But, oh, the turnaround. It's going to be there. Jabs has just been playing out of his mind. The BKB comes out. Limp just trying to orb away from that. They will be able to chase, find another kill. Chessy falls. They buy back on Mushi. Maneski smelling blood and smelling a game one victory. Unless something magical happens here from Complexity. Greaves again, trying to turn, trying to keep him alive, and they are able to force a couple back, but Maneski can just reset yep. and go again. The boots of travel back in means they're ready to fight immediately. Kyle's probably dead here. Has got the shrine that may save his life. It's going to be close. Ice path out as well. They're keeping him controlled. Limp on the back lines, trying to kill off jabs, but the decrep, it keeps him alive as well. They can't keep a kill onto anybody. Complexity just trying to find anything at all, but this big bad Viper yeah. standing in front of all of them. Three seconds done, another decrep. Night Stalker's not dying. Chessie finally falls. And that might be the nail biter, the jabs, walrus punch, the stun as well. He can't get the orb out. And that should be game number one. Maneski, make it happen. Whew. That was very well thought out from Maneski. From the drop to the way they played the aggression, created space for Mushi to farm. Couple, maybe, I don't even want to say slip ups on the high ground, but some good defense from Cole where they made it look close. I mean, I. Maneski, maybe they went for the dive. They end up winning the fight well enough. They got the racks, so the results speak for itself as Maneski take a big win against Cole here. Cole went for the big team fight drafts. We've kind of seen they had that pushing.